All right, welcome back to the To Be Better podcast. We are the Chris's. Uh, we do question and answers, emails, and sometimes we simply talk shit. But first, a disclaimer. We are not professionals. No. no <laughs> Everything we that we speak on is opinions derived from experiences and outside knowledge we've gotten from other resources. Mm -hmm. If you get any value or something we said resonates with you, share this. Yes, that's how we grow. <laughs> and if you're not subscribed, why not? Yeah, that's a good question. If you're not subscribed, you're going to miss out on this whole experience. That's the Chris's. That is the Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> Please leave a comment. Your comments are actually super dope to read. Knowing how that we've impacted you or your relationship, it just helps us continue to do what we're doing, and it shows that what we say works sometimes. And to submit a question or just to email us and say how we've helped or maybe constructive criticism, email us at tobebetterco at gmail.com. The number two. The number two. Emails will be read anonymously on this podcast, unless specified otherwise by the sender. So if you don't want us to put your story out there, tell us that. Correct. If you're going to send emails, please be as detailed as possible. If you give us a one-sided email about how your partner is the problem, that is all we will address. Yeah, you will get a one-sided reply. Yes. Nobody is perfect. Take accountability. Everybody can grow. Ooh, preach. And we are giving unbiased, honest opinions. We are not yes men. So if you submit something to us, be prepared for an answer that you might not like getting. But we are going to give you a very honest outside perspective. Is that the full disclaimer? Yeah. Now to the episode. So I had two thoughts. Okay. The first one is, I'm a snake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little slitter of snake. You, you know that guy is like famous on the internet for that. And, yes. and, and somebody asked him like, oh, what's the most famous thing you've ever done? And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. And the second thought is, I said it prior, that song, I don't know what it is. It makes me want to belly dance in the desert. So like I did, I was going to do this thing where like I was going to put my hand on my shoulders and try not to move and I move my hips. Because when I do it sitting down, it doesn't look as stupid if I were to try to do it standing up because I'm going to look like a gummy worm. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was my thought. And I started smiling because I was like, I'm going to look super ridiculous either way. That's funny. I just, I saved a video on TikTok where like a woman's trying to show you how to belly dance and I saved it. I'm like, I should try to do that. But it's going to be a very comical video if I do it because I don't know how to desynchronize my body and just move your hips. Right. Yeah. Because even when I move my hips, I can feel myself like just... <laughs> That's a thing. How? All right. So normally uh, we do question and answers in podcasts and mm -hmm. we, we do fun video. Well, we don't really do fun videos. We do videos that taxes us, you know, emotionally and spiritually pretty hard most of the time. Yes. Um, we've decided to do something different tonight. And um, I love that you're drinking wine out of a teacup. I think that that's hysterical. The straw, you're classy broad. Yeah. <laughs> I want to preserve my teeth. <laughs> um, this is super stupid, but I love Jeffree Star. And I know some people hate him for whatever reasons. I, but I saw him, he drinks a lot of Red Bull and he had a, his teeth professionally done. He spent like $25,000 on his teeth. And he was like, I drink through a straw. That way the Red Bull and carbonation doesn't hit my teeth. And I was like, oh, that's smart. So that's what I do. Because some rich person said to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even remember what I was going to talk about now. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Um, oh, we normally do question and answers, uh, things that are communication based things to try to give people tools to help communicate a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are not doing that. Yeah. We're going to show you guys our goofy side. Yeah. We, we did, um, we're going to do more of a get to know us with 40 tabletop questions that are supposed to help like be like, icebreakers or something. Yeah. Good. Like din dinner conversation kind of thing. Um, I would like to say that we have been making content more for Patreon than we have for YouTube. We if, have. if you don't follow us on Patreon, the link will be in the description. It you know you're missing out if you're not. Yeah, you guys who who are are into this and like are have mm -hmm. been here since the beginning. Um, if you find value in what we're doing and you want to support us, that is the best way to do it. Yeah. Other than that, please share this or share some of our other videos that's helped you. Mm -hmm. Ten bucks a month, less than what you'll spend at Starbucks in yeah. a day. Yep. Yeah. And it's more, we actually get more of that $10 than we do from our subscriptions on TikTok mm -hmm. when we do our live streams. And we're moving away from doing live streams on TikTok and are going to be doing them on Patreon, um, Patreon 
now that that capture card came, it's going to the computer Monday. Tim is going to come and set up OBS and all of the microphones and everything will run directly into the computer instead of recording to multiple cameras and multiple devices and then being put into the computer for me to edit. Fantastic. Yeah, because I'm over that shit. So I know we're doing like a 40 questions type thing. You can do whatever. But I'm going into this with the mentality of I'm going to win. Okay. <laughs> so it's a competition. <laughs> it's I. Maybe. <laughs> you want to switch from wine to whiskey? So you can get like a little... Get some like hair some on my like chest or something? Angst. I, I can take a shot without like... <laughs> <laughs> that fucking cat. I just the I take a shot every and time. wipe my mouth because I holes and whatnot. All right. You want to just jump in? Let's go. What was your first job? My first job, I was a bagger at Winn-Dixie at 14. Are we talking like... Did you have any under the table jobs before then? Um, no. I mean, my grandpa used to take me fishing, and my job was to like put the <laughs> shrimp on his hook. But that was just—that's not a job, babe. He repaid me in emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that really counts. But you never held the flashlight for your dad at two a.m. while he's been drinking, and it shows. <laughs> yeah, no, my dad was MIA in my childhood. Yeah, so it's a yeah. Um. My first real job, like paid tax job, was pizza. Uh, I did work at Papa John's. Yeah. Yeah. I worked there for like, I don't know, three days. What? <laughs> Do you want to know how I lost, well, how I left my job at Winn Dixie at 14 years old? Sure. So I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I was a 14 year old working with a bunch of 30 year olds. Like, I was a child. And I just didn't want to go back. And my mom was like, well, you can't just not go back. And I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? And she was like, I'm just going to tell him your eyebrow piercing got infected and you had to have surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got out of my first job. That's funny. That's stupid. My first real job was doing tree work and I was much younger than I was when I worked at Papa John's, but yeah. Papa John's was my first. And the Papa John's that I worked at, there was a bug problem. Oh no, don't tell me yeah. that. It wasn't as bad as you see on like bar rescue, but th there mm. was every once in a while you'd see a big bug in the store. And, yeah. um, my manager's name was Carl at the time, mm -hmm. and he, uh, you know, I have had a full beard since I was 12 years old. No way. Yeah, I'm, I've been a hairy motherfucker my whole life. Good for you. No, no, it's not. What do you mean, no? It, it's not good because you can't have facial hair when you work in a restaurant of any type. You can't have like a little beard. You can't have none? any of it. And like I didn't shave, and I went in there, and he's like, you can't have that. You need to shave. And like he handed me a razor <coughs> and like insisted that I shaved with it instead of just sending me home. <laughs> I have no idea where that razor was. And knowing what I know about hygiene now, mm -hmm. I should have sued him for that because he wasn't letting me leave. And, it, mm -hmm. and like basically at 14 or 15 years old made me shave with somebody else's razor in the bathroom and like hygiene purposes that can create all kinds of problems. Right. Knowing what I know now, my parents should have known better. And, and like when I told them what happened, they should have sued them. Anyways, Papa John's, I could have been the guy. Yeah. I, could, I could have been Shaq's fucking homeboy right now. <laughs> um, but I, I made it a point to stomp on one of those fucking bugs really loud after after that happened like a day later and was mm -hmm. like, did you guys see the size of that fucking cockroach? Yeah, I lost my job. I love that. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So we both lost our first jobs or quit our first jobs in very weird scenarios. So yeah. you guys now know that. We were children. <laughs> um, I got to be honest, I was never made for that. Like I enjoyed working outside doing landscaping shit yeah. way more than I ever enjoyed working in a restaurant. Yeah, I could never work in a grocery. That was the only job I had in a grocery store. And I hated it. Yeah. Who was the most famous person you've ever met? I mean, I saw like, oh, what is it called? The, that orchestra that plays Christmas music, but in like a super rock way. Oh, my God. The Trans-Siberian Orchestra? Yes. Okay. Yes. I okay. got to meet one of their saxophone players. That's the most famous? Yeah, I would say so. I met Macho Man Randy Savage. You did not. I did. Working at Arby's. He used to come to the Arby's that I went through. He used to get two big Montanas every day that he came through the drive through And uh, I met Paul White, who was the big show, because he was uh, his original manager was Menace's uncle. Mm -hmm. So I got to go to his house and beat him at chess. It was kind of nice. I was young. What? Yep. Um, you don't realize how big people are that mm -hmm. you see on TV until you really see them in person. Right. And, dude, it's fucking huge. Um, who else have I met? I've met a lot of famous people, not like cool with them or anything, but just in passing because we live in Florida. I vote my, my mom saw Stephen King. Yeah. He's got a house out in, um, Longboat Key. Yeah. She, uh, used to service one of the Publixes when she worked for Coca-Cola mm. 
He shopped there regularly. Yeah. One of the people pulled her aside because she was in good. She went to that store multiple times a week, and she, I believe she was there for like five years before she got promoted. Mm. One of the people pulled her aside, and she was like, hey, that's Stephen King. And mom was like, shut up. She was like, yeah, he's here like every Thursday. And I'm like, oh, my God, he just lives a regular life. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's one of us. It's funny. Uh, I would lose my mind if I met Stephen King. Yeah. Oh, God, I love his writing. Yeah. He inspired me to be a writer. Like, I wrote a lot of stories in high school. I was going, I'm being the next Stephen King. Just stay off of Twitter. Stay what? Stay off of Twitter. I've never even made a Twitter account. It was a joke because he's basically destroyed everything about him because of his Twitter account. Oh, no. In my opinion. Obviously, other people may worship him still because of his Twitter. I, I, anyways. Yeah. Uh, if you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? In an instant. First thing that came up to my mind was whale calling. <laughs> Calm down, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Whale calling. Whale calling, yeah. That's your final answer? Um, no, but that's the only one that came to my mind, and I'm playing this with whatever comes first. So, <laughs> I would want to be able to, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan the guitar. <sighs> yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah. I feel like I could teach myself to sing. Like it's I, not hard. I, I've never. I don't. I have no intention of ever doing that. Like Why? I don't. I won't even karaoke. I sing to you all the time, and you like it. I that's know, as far I as that's going to go. It makes me melt. You're but, like my own personal Elvis. But could you imagine if I could play the guitar and sing? Be we amazing. Could, we could jam together. Yeah. Bust out my saxophone. <laughs> so you're sticking with whale calling. Ah. Uh, because <laughs> that I'm definitely seeing you not winning with that answer. <laughs> um, ooh, a trapeze artist. Yeah. That would be fun. Okay. That'd be the closest I get to flying. Or like I can fly a plane. You could be a pilot. I could be a pilot. That would be a skill. Uh hold my breath underwater for ten minutes. Be one of those mermaids. <laughs> that wiki watchy. Yeah. You probably do that. I would definitely do that. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I would I'm gonna say guitar still just because it's something that I've always wanted to do and I'm not musically inclined. Like you know, at all. I try to play the guitar. My mom went out and bought me one and everything. I can play the bass guitar. Yeah. But like an actual guitar with six strings. Like, who can memorize six strings and all uh, mm -mm, yeah. too much. <laughs> and if I if I didn't pick that one, I would want to be able to uh draw and paint like Bill Voles. Yeah. Dude's a fucking monster. William Voles. He's mm -hmm. V underscore V O L Z underscore on Instagram if you guys want to know who I'm talking about. Shout out to Bill, it's my homie. Um uh, who is someone you really admire? Who do I admire? That you mean like look up to or? It just says admire. Could you? Be, it could, no, no, no. You can't pick me. Why? No, nope, Because that's, no. That's like looking up to a garbage can. <laughs> you Pick somebody that actually has redeeming qualities. Uh, the only person really coming to my mind right now is um, Jordan Peterson. That's where I, I was going to say Peterson. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. That's really the only person I can think of. Like that dude is inspired. Firing. Yeah. I listen to him talk and I'm like he's just articulating my mind. Because you picked Peterson, I'm not going to. I'm going to say Andy Frasilla instead. Yeah. Yep. Just because dude's done a lot more in business in the same amount of time that I have. And mm -hmm. like it, he actually does it's inspired me to be better. Yeah. So, uh, number five, what is your earliest memory? My earliest memory. So I have two of them. One of them, one of them is really dark. But the first one is I remember. My sister still in diapers, so I must have been like three or four years old, and she was trying to fit her fat baby butt in my Barbie pool, breaking it. And I'm like, "It's my birthday, get out of my Barbie pool so I can play pretend." She broke it. <laughs> I was pretty upset about that. Um, my second earliest memory—I was probably like five or six—but I had this reoccurring nightmare, and I was like being guided around like Disney World. That sounds like a nightmare. And there was a point where like they were filming Mickey Mouse and like marshland with weeds and shit. And you could just see like the top of his head. So from like here up is what you saw. And I saw him take his arm out of the water and he like grabbed the side of his head and he was peeling it back and his brains was coming out. Yeah. That's pretty vulgar for a child. Yeah. Mine's not as cool as that. So you went that's, on that That's one. cool. <laughs> I was traumatized. My my first, I think my youngest memory was, it had to have been like a birthday party or something. Mm -hmm. And I just remember riding my little electric motorcycle through the house. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then my, I think my second oldest memory is my dad stepping on a, a sewing needle. <sighs> yeah. It's weird because I have, I have memories of like my, my dad's mom, but I don't have any of my dad's dad. Hmm. It, it's weird. I don't know. Uh, what made you smile recently? Mm. <laughs> See? <laughs> what made me smile recently? I'm willing to bet nobody makes it through this full 440 list question. No? No. They're going to be like, this is stupid, and they're going to turn us off. Probably. Something that made me smile recently. I had mashed potatoes earlier. Yeah. That made me pretty happy. I like the texture of them. It's like I don't really have to chew it, so I'm just kind of like mashing against the roof of my mouth with my tongue and swallowing. Mine was you being in the middle of a sentence and me taking my headphones off and you stop talking and then me going, babe, I can still hear you. <laughs> it's so that you can continue talking. <laughs> Yikes. It was awesome. That was not one of my best moments. It was definitely funny. It was, I was hysterical. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, I'm giving people advice. Wow. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm smart when I want to be, guys. <laughs> oh, you're going to win this one, too. Oh, I'm excited. Let's go. What's your favorite place you've ever visited? France. I knew that was coming. Specifically, okay. There are two favorite spots that I had in France. One of them was, this is really stupid, but we were on a tour bus. and Well, it wasn't a tour bus, but we were on a bus with other French people. And we were driving past a Paris catacombs, like the entrance to it. And I was just thinking, there's a whole world underneath me right now that I want to visit, and I can't because an adult is going to tell me no, and I'm not 18 yet. That's stupid. But like the energy I felt from being at the entrance of the Paris catacombs just did it for me. Yeah. And then we went to Nice. We were on a train, and I felt like Harry Potter, so that was really cool for me. Um, but we got to Nice, and we went to the beach. And the, the beach wasn't sand. It was just all rocks. And I'm looking out at the Mediterranean Ocean, and I'm like, I'm looking at the fucking Mediterranean Ocean. <laughs> that was a big deal for me. And like there was a sunset and I had a whole Titanic moment where I was Rose and there was someone behind me and she was being Jack and it was, I had a good time. That made me really happy. Uh, mine is a tie between Hawaii and Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii, because I, I've always had an obsession with Polynesian culture my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, but Montana, because I, I've never seen a more beautiful landscape ever in my life. And, and like when I went out there, it was, it was, I want to say early April, maybe late April, early May, mm -hmm. but it was still snow. Most of the, most of Glacier National Park was frozen still. Wow. And we ended up driving six hours to go to Yellowstone mm -hmm. and we went the way that we had to go to Yellowstone. We ended up going through um, Idaho and Wyoming into the, the Yellowstone Park and even Yellowstone was still frozen over. So. But it was it was very cool. Like that that landscape for me, that big sky country is just yeah. It does it. It so does it for me. The storms that they get out there are different than any of the storms I've ever seen anywhere. Normally, you just get rain clouds and it rains and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. Their storms out there are like shapes. You know, you see all these crazy Instagram photos with the round clouds. I saw one of those in real life. It wasn't Photoshop. Oh wow! Like, yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, you win. You win on that one because I haven't left the country yet. But we're gonna hit Iceland. That's gonna be the most uh. memorable. Then, yep. Number eight, what is your favorite family tradition? My favorite family tradition. I'm going to have to, to name this one, getting to know the Chris's. Yeah. A whole bunch of useless ass information. I for love you. it though. So one of my favorite family traditions, this is something that my great grandmother started. And this is something that I've actually started doing with the kids. And I think you've heard them say it. So around Christmas time, because it's colder outside, we start getting those pink hues in the sky. Mm. And at sunset, when those, when those pinks started happening, my mom would always point at it and say, hey, what does that mean? It means Santa Claus is making candy canes. <laughs> okay. And I started telling the kids that, and now they get super excited when they see the pink in the sky. And they're like, oh, it's Santa. He's making his candy canes. And it just, it makes me happy. I actually don't have an answer for this. I know. I wish I did. I'm sorry. But I don't. Um... What's something new that you want to do this year? This is number nine. You are winning at this point because I actually just negated a question and you won question number seven. So <laughs> I'm just struggling that you yeah. <laughs> Um, Okay. Something what new I want to do this year? Something new you want to do this year. There's a lot of new things I want to do this year. I want to get my motorcycle endorsement. You're serious about that? Huh? I am serious about that. Yeah. That worries me. 
The only reason I nixed it is because we had a conversation and you were like, I don't want you to do that. And it, you're like, it worries me. It, it would be one of those things that, so it worries me for two reasons. Mm-hmm. Do you really want to get into this now or no? Do you, do you care to hear all this? Okay. I'm, everybody wrecks their first motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Right. Um, and there's only two types of riders, mm-hmm. those who have gone down and those who are going down. I've been in motorcycle accidents and I've been in ones that should have killed me. And all that happened was like, I broke my femur, my tailbone broke, my wrist came through my skin. Like I had massive right. road rash. Had I hit my head mm-hmm. because I wasn't wearing a helmet like a dumbass, I'd have died. Um, <clears throat> I shouldn't have walked away from that accident, but it took me a very long time to heal from that. Right. And every time I know people who have gone down, it's always because they're riding by themselves. Yeah. So if you got your motorcycle endorsement, I would rather it be a lot of us riding together mm-hmm. because, I mean, I'm not going to say you're less likely to do dumb shit because every time I've done triple digits for long durations, it's always been with groups of people riding in and out of traffic and shit. But when I'm with a group of people and we're just kind of putzing around town, it's not the same. Right. So I, I don't know. I have a very real concern there because of the accidents that I have and because right. I know somebody who who literally broke their neck and back because somebody turned too wide on a road Yeah. and he had no choice but to get off the road or get hit like straight on by this car. Right. And when you, you say all that and then this morning you were like, I might just get my motorcycle again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I said if Jeff, if Jeff did, because it would be nice to be able to ride with them because I, I do right. enjoy riding. But, you know, when you see somebody that you respect, like the guy that I know that went down, mm-hmm. who was like 250 pounds of pure muscle, like he was a fucking beast. And now he's walking around with a cane because right. his back is broken. Like, I don't know. There's just a lot of concerns and all that shit for me. I don't, you know, I, I. I, I've been back on the bike numerous times. I've had probably eight motorcycles since my motorcycle accident. Mm-hmm. I stopped riding because of of his accident. Like when I when I heard what happened, I got rid of my bike. I don't know. I guess your priorities change a little bit as you get older when you care about somebody. I don't know. It's just kind of frustrating for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because you haven't got to live that life yet. No, it's frustrating for me because like I was super excited about it and you kind of nixed the idea because of the dangers of it. But then one of your buddies is probably going to get a bike and you're like all about it. Well, it's different if I die. I cannot believe you just said that to me. <laughs> Why? I'm actually infuriated by yeah. that statement. Yeah. It, well, that, that's the point. If if you went down and something happened to you and it was because I was like, fuck it, let's get motorcycles, I would never forgive myself for that. Right. But you're willing to get on a motorcycle because one of your buddies is thinking about getting a motorcycle. No, I'd be willing to do it because I've always enjoyed riding. Mm. But I also am not willing to get a crotch rocket ever again, so... But me wanting to get a motorcycle is not you want to be like, hey, let's get motorcycles together. <laughs> but because... Because uh, it's you. I'm getting agitated. You can be agitated. I love you and I don't want to see you get hurt. I understand that. It also makes me feel like one of your friends is a higher priority no, than me and no, no, no. sense yeah. of enjoyment. Yeah, because you know what? If one of my friends went down on a bike, that would suck. Yeah. But if you went down on a bike, it would fucking destroy me. It's not the same thing. Right. But you're not willing to get a bike with me because you're worried about what could happen to me. But you're willing to get a bike I with your friends. That. I never said that I wasn't willing to get a bike with you. I never once said that. I'm not comfortable with you riding. Right. It's a me thing. Yeah. It has nothing to do with us not getting bikes together, babe. I love you, and I don't want to ever see you get hurt on a motorcycle. I've been through that. You can you can be salty with me all you want I, over I that. I will do everything salty. I can to make sure that I, you're safe. I'm not salty over the fact that you want me safe. I'm salty over the fact that when I brought up us like I wanted to get motorcycles with us so we can go out and enjoy our time and you were really standoffish about the idea and you even said I'm probably never going to get another motorcycle right and, and I may not if Jeff was to get a, like a, a a small not big motorcycle and not a crotch rocket I would consider it if but you wh- if why you, does that change the conversation then? because Jeff has been riding motorcycles just as long as I have I'm not worried about me going down on a bike ever again I, I know like my bad accident, part of that was my ego. And had I, I like looking back on it, there were things that I could have done to minimize that entire scenario. Right. But I didn't slow down because of the way things were going. I just assumed this person was not coming into my lane and I made a really bad fucking move. But I've also been on motorcycles my entire life. So like I have an understanding of it all. My, I'm just going to go back to saying it again. My thing with you not riding is because I want to keep you safe. I love you and I want to make sure that you're here for as long as I am. Okay, so if I say that I love you and I want to make sure you're safe, I don't want you to get a motorcycle. I wouldn't get one. Maybe the end of the discussion. I wouldn't even argue with you about it. Okay. I would sit in the bathtub with a helmet on going vroom, 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 vroom when I felt like I needed to ride. 
I actually have no desire to do that. If right. I needed to have an adrenaline dump like that, I would jump out of an airplane or something. Yeah. Which I'm not doing that either because it scares the shit out of me. I would do that. Would you? That was going to be the next thing I say, yeah. Yeah? I would jump out of a plane. I would go bungee jumping. Uh, I, I would watch from the ground yeah. with my 600 millimeter lens and try to take pictures of you. My big ass would probably pass out or have a heart attack falling yeah. out of a plane. I'm good on that. I'm here for it. Oh, uh-uh, no. Are you calm still? Are you calm now? Or are you still salty? Do you need a minute before we move no, on? I'm still a little salty, but I'm satisfied with the way that conversation ended. <laughs> I do love you. I love you too. And I don't, I, it really does stress me out. The thought of you getting hurt does not do it for me. Yeah. Like at all. Right. And I, I, I understand that. My point in all of that is it, it hurt my feelings a little bit because I was super gung ho about us getting motorcycles together. Let's get scooters or like a Honda Grom. Let's get something right. really small that can't go more than like 60 miles an hour. I know me. Right. But my, my saltiness was from, I felt like when I brought that up, you completely shit on the conversation. Yeah. And then one of your buddies is like, hey, I might get a motorcycle and you're all about that shit. That stung a little bit. Yeah. It's, again, it comes down to my safety not being as important right. as your safety is. That's bullshit. Well, that's the way you see it. I, I get it because if the roles were reversed, I would feel the same way. So I, right. I'm not saying that, <laughs> that I, I don't I, understand your point. but so But I need you to understand like, my safety is paramount to you, right? right? Your safety is paramount to me. Right, but it's not to me. So you want me to live the rest of my life without you because you want to ride a motorcycle? We've already established I'm going to die before you because I'm old. Oh my God, you fucker. <laughs> can, can, I, can, I be, can I be like really honest right now? What? I love it when you talk to me like that. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Yeah. I, oh my God. You want me to degrade you a little bit? No, that's. <laughs> I don't see that as degrading. No, no. You know, if you were to be like you fat stinky motherfucker, no, that would bother I me. I would never do that. But to just drop the f bomb and like, uh, it does it. I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <sighs> What's the best advice you ever heard? The best advice I ever heard. Don't ride motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to let you go first because I have to really oh, think on this. Man. The best advice I've ever heard. If you're going to do something, do it 100% or don't bother. Um, those, this isn't advice that I've heard, but this is advice that I've actually started giving myself when I went through my weight loss journey. I realized that six months is going to come and go. Mm-hmm. You can't stop the future from coming. It's going to happen. So you can either take steps to be happier in six months or you can be in the same place in six months. Um, how do you like your eggs? Over medium. Ooh, or poached. Yeah. Yeah. Classy. I was going to make a, a bloody joke there, but I'm, oh. I'm not going to. Because yeah. <laughs> you asked me not to do that. So, uh, I don't, I just like eggs. They all taste like eggs. Yeah. I just, the only one, only way I don't like my eggs is over easy. Mm-hmm. Unless I have like gravy and biscuits because yeah. then I just mash it all together. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I don't like my eggs runny. Ooh, I like hard boiled eggs too. Soft boiled eggs. Yeah. Oh my God. But like a little, like when they've been marinated in like soy sauce or something. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a soft boiled egg. Oh, it's so good. Do you collect anything? I collect a lot of things. I collect memories. I collect rocks. I collect dead things. I collect a lot of things. I like sunglasses. And ooh, I like like gift cards. I have a whole little purse from when I was a kid of full of like 200 gift cards just because I felt like an adult. I, I guess maybe I collect camera bags. But it's not because I, I want to collect camera bags. It's not really a collection. You just collect backpacks. Right. Well, it's <laughs> because I'm always looking for the right bag. Right. But it's not a collection. Like, I would give away all the backpacks I don't use. I just, mm-hmm. I can't resell them. I mean, I probably could make marketplace, but right. it's it's not worth me dealing with those people. And mm-hmm. they can just stay in the closet. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything that I actually just collect. Like, things that I'm like, oh, I got to have this for my collection. Mm. I don't have anything like that. I have some of my teeth. I don't have I don't have a collection of anything. No. I I don't collect things. What? Who doesn't do that? Everybody has things that are like oh shiny. I have to have this for my my thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a collection. That's of anything. weird. That is wild. Uh, what is your favorite breakfast cereal? Oh man, I like the cocoa puffs. What about mine? Your favorite cereal, Reese's uh, the Reese's puffs. Yeah, fuck yeah. It. I'll eat that shit until my mouth is raw. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I like uh, peanut butter Captain Crunch too. Yeah. I do this thing. So it's specifically with like the chocolate cocoa, whatever. The cocoa pebbles. That's it. The cocoa pebbles. I put a layer down, pour the milk on it, let that get a little soggy. And then I add a new fresh layer so it's crunchy. It's like a whole texture thing for me. It's really nice. <laughs> that was like a a whole experience of breakfast for you just then, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I miss eating cereal. I do too. <laughs> Damn, I do too. I miss two things from pre-dieting. I miss yeah. I miss Reese's cereal. Mm-hmm. And I, I could eat a box of that at a time. Like uh, I, yeah, no, I, I had that big cereal. cereal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I miss hummus with Frito chips. Oh my God. Yeah, that's really good. That that's, was that was really all I was eating when I lived at Stephanie's. Like that literally was all I ate. I had that mm-hmm. was it. I I would DoorDash that shit. Two boxes of cereal, a gallon of milk, a thing of hummus, and then the Fritos. Yeah. And that then was I started like, cooking for yeah. you. And then yeah, and then I got healthy. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> no, I, I, I you know what? I got the exact opposite. What do you mean? I got into a relationship and then got healthy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna Yeah. <laughs> an all me thing guys yeah well you know me being in my mid 70s i gotta do whatever i can do you remember the first meal that i made for you um yes Ooh, what is it was it? shepherd's pie at stephanie's house it was not no she made, she made the shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie you made uh fuck are you sh- no you're right give me a minute because i know that it was at stephanie's house because i remember there's a big whole ordeal about you cooking mm-hmm Oh, what was it? It was something that I asked for. It wasn't something you asked for. Okay, then I don't know. I made a mil- mental note of something that you enjoyed eating, and I made it for you. I made homemade tomato soup from scratch. Oh, and grilled cheese sandwiches. With jalapenos yep. and bacon. How dare you think another woman cooked a meal oh, that my I God. made? You're more salty th- over that than the motorcycle thing? I am thing? a little salty about that. How how dare you misremember that? <laughs> I'm fucking old. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't care. I, I, I re- it really doesn't don't bother care much. me. It, it doesn't bother me. It bothers me a little bit. <laughs> That's funny. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh my god, with that Texas bread, mm, the thick, big thick fluff. Texas mm. toast. Yep. And you know when when we had the comic book store, I was pushing for that hard. Like we need to do gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. People will eat that shit up. That would be the way to do it. They just fought me on it tooth and nail. There's a whole food happen. truck de- like de- de- blah, blah, blah. Yeah, dedicated to it. Yes. Yep. And they sell that shit for $10, $15 a sandwich. I love grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, God. Uh, what is your most used emoji? My u- most used emoji? I can tell you right now. Hang on. Let me pull it up. <laughs> Since you're the only person I message. Let's see. my fr- mm-hmm. uh, So the first one's a black heart. And then it's the, the okay. And then it's the rock. And then it is like that, the little simp face. We're just like, huh? That one. (laughs) I don't use emojis. And then it's the vomit emoji. I use that one a lot too. (laughs) Because a lot of things make me go, (laughs) hit. I I don't use emojis. No? Mm -mm. Really? I don't speak emoji either. Like if you were to send me a message of just emojis to try to tell me what you're telling me mm-hmm. i would i would just wait until you got home and be like i don't understand yeah i don't do that i don't i, I need english yeah yeah that's wild worst style choice you ever made do you really want to know this i mean it's asking <sighs> so this was a regular outfit for me uh almost every day my eighth grade year so i would wear pants tuck in whatever band t-shirt i had on and i'd wear colored suspenders and a tie Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I got Jinkos. <gasps> Do you still have them? Yeah, I got a couple of them in the Shut closet. The you know, fuck they up. they remade Jinkos. They 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 released them again. So that was a huge part of my my childhood. Like my I, teenage years was a whole lot of fucking drugs and Jinko jeans. I want to learn so, a roller skate just so I can wear those jeans. So I've actually worn them to the skating rink recently. Like one of the probably the last six times we went, I wore them at least once. I don't remember that. Yeah. Peter, I feel robbed. Peter has some too. I remember him wearing him with his light up roller blades. Yeah, when they when they came out with those again, yeah, it's somehow like I don't know. It hit my Facebook thing as like mm-hmm. a sponsored post, and I was like, <gasps> and I went and bought a whole bunch of that shit, and then I lost all my weight and none of it fit, and then I bought a whole bunch more of it and realized how fucking stupid I look wearing that shit, and it just sits in the closet now. I would wear them right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Are you kidding me? I saw a dude pull a Nintendo sixty four out of the back pocket of one of those things. You yeah. know how many things I could carry. 
You can, I don't have pockets yeah. right now. The the kangaroos, you could fit an entire quart, quart bottle, like a, a, a quart of what? beer in the back pocket of that. And if you were sitting down because of where the pocket was, it would be sitting upright. What a time to be alive, yeah. the 90s. <laughs> yep. And I'm not ashamed that I bought them a second time. I'm really not. Like, I want to buy them for the first time I, in 2023. I, I have I have two pairs of shorts, four pairs of pants, and a pair of the kangaroos. You know, I think with how big my butt is, it could work. What do you mean? Like your pants could fit me. I don't. Uh, yeah. I mean, they may. We could try. I want to try. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was going to make a getting you out of your jeans joke, but they're my jeans, so. Get me into your jeans. Yeah, the, the the joke just doesn't work. I was trying really fucking hard. Yeah. It just didn't get there. Um, if you were a wrestler, what would your entrance theme song be? Trenches. I don't know that song. Ah, uh, can't we can't pull it up? I know. It'll get us kicked off TikTok or uh, YouTube. They'll de- they'll um copyright infringement. It's by Pop Evil. I don't know who that is. Either. You don't know who that is. Nope. I have I have not listened to a new artist. I honestly can't. I think NF is probably the only new artist that I listen to, like on a regular basis, and yeah. that's only because I, you know, it's I um, like his shit. It's, this song came out almost ten years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mine would be Lagrange by ZZ Top. Oh God, I love that song. That yeah. would be my theme song anytime I do anything. If I'm getting out of the car, <gasps> Lagrange is playing. Dead. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. I got a thing for the ZZ Top guys. Yeah, yeah, with it, their beards and shit. You know that Gillette offered them stupid money to shave their beards with one of their razors, like what? like millions and millions of dollars. They didn't do it. No, of course Good. not. That's their trademark thing. I just sold out. Been like, fuck it, Mm-mm. give me the money. I mean, they don't need it. Obviously, they're right. multi-millionaires anyways. But ooh, or Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. Okay, that's a good one. That's my final answer. Okay. Yeah. If you could bring back any fashion trend, what would it be? The pinup style of the 50s. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I would rock that shit. You know, I might just do that as my whole wardrobe. You should ask Peter to to see him in a zoot suit. Oh. He has authentic zoot suits that he zoot? spent big money on. Yeah. What is a the zoot The long suit? chain, the pinstripe suits with the big oh. fucking hat and the, the hair, the feather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's in it. Oh, dude. I would look so hot in that outfit. <laughs> Oh man! What would you bring back? Jinkos. <laughs> <laughs> I need a reason to wear them again, guys. Yeah. Let's get on it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I d- I've never been a fashion person. Like yeah. I, I like to wear what I like to wear because it's comfortable. And I liked my Jinkos because I did. I did a lot of drugs in the nineties, mm-hmm. and they were just comfortable. It wasn't like I was wearing anything except for around my waist because nothing else ever touched my skin. Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna change my answer. I want to bring back the Edwardian dresses. Like the corsets and shit and those nice, elegant dresses. Oh, we can do that. I mean, we can't bring it back, but if you want to start wearing corsets around the house and shit, I'm, I'm on <laughs> board for that. I want to wear it in public. Well, I would kill somebody. We can't do that. That's mine. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I would, I would let it happen. Just so, just so that I could fucking show you off and be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Look what I landed. Yeah. Seven, 70, mid-70s right here, bitch. <laughs> love that you're just riding that train yeah well i mean people are going to try to insult me you got to pick something better than my looks i just thought of that hard hardware comment or whatever. oh yeah a Some, toolbox exploded yeah. next to my Ta- face. tackle box that's so stupid all of this is super ineffective as hardware you can't use this to catch a fish right that that jewelry in your face is is worth so much more than tackle anyways right and it's gold mm-hmm. like with real stones in it yeah try again scrub <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I enjoy it when people try to insult us because most of the time it's really ignorant. Right. There are people, though, that come intelligent with some shit that, like, makes me think about things. And I'm like, damn, do I really do that? Am I really that person? And then that that breaks me down. Yeah. But all the name calling <laughs> and the age jokes and the ugly jokes and, yeah. like, you got fucked up teeth. Man, I know that shit already. You got to do better than that. I've been hearing them my whole life. Like, come original. I want you to know if you were 70, I'd still jump your bones right yeah. now. Yeah. Right now? You'd break my hip. <laughs> Wow, I'm really over here trying to solve a solution that doesn't even exist. I just, I just, <laughs> I what just I know how our, our playtime works, and I would be injured from that at 70. You're just gonna have to get a titanium hip. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> at least it wouldn't break again. <laughs> right, like solutions. Let's go. <laughs> You're a fucking innovator, babe. I know. This is fun. I'm having fun. <laughs> We are so dumb. We are. 
Uh, Thank God this is not going on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, no. People that pay for our, our services would be like, what the fuck is this? This I delete. Unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you had a late night talk show, who would you invite as your first guest? Oh man. Zach Galifianakis. Really? Yes. You just had that ready to go. <laughs> why? Why why is that Galifianakis? Whatever his name Between is. Between two ferns. I don't know. Is exactly oh. the oh, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that man. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. that's a, a big question because that means you get to ask them any questions you want and just like kind of vibe with them a little yeah. bit. I feel like that's a very like I, I need time to answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Be, that, I think this doesn't even have to be a serious answer. Though. I, it, to me, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Because what if we ever make it super famous and le- they reach out and be like, "Hey, you wanted to interview me?" I'd be like, <gasps> yes. <laughs> and if I say something really stupid, I'm gonna get stuck <clears throat> talking to some dumbass. Okay. So if this is a legit answer, I'm gonna say Bunny. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I would love to see that interview. Me and Bunny. Yep. Stop it. Yeah. That would be that would be super dope. Um for those of you that don't know, that's Jelly Roll's wife. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with her. Damn, that was a good answer. That that whole Christmas thing that she did, I was legit gonna replicate that for you, but we didn't have a massive Christmas center, so there was no point in doing it. But I was fully prepared to like rub mashed potatoes all over <laughs> me and shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> I had an outfit picked out on everything. Yeah? Yeah. You were in it. I was I was yes. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I honestly don't even know where I would start with that. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm intelligent enough to have a conversation with Jordan Peterson, so I can't put him on there. I disagree. I, I, I don't think you I could don't articulate. Think I, I don't think I could keep up. Mm. His vocabulary is so big that I have to pause his shit in Google words to get the oh. definitions. Like he, he's yeah. like next level intelligent. It, it makes me feel small. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I am also super obsessed with him and I feel like my, my, I've become a smarter person because mm-hmm. of it. Um, man, late night talk show ho. It would have to be somebody famous too, because otherwise people wouldn't care that they're on there. Right. So like, I I couldn't just be like, <laughs> you know, some nobody. It would have to be somebody that's relevant. Andrew Tate. No. <laughs> nope. It would definitely get me views though. It would definitely get you views. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know if I, I don't think that I would be able to have a long term conversation with him. <sighs> And like keep a seriousness about it. Oh God, no! That that whole thing would be a a mess. It would. I I would view it as like a Dave Chappelle comedy skit. Mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle would be a good one to interview. He would. Snoop Dogg. <clears throat> yep, Snoop too. I. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but he's put out a whole album geared towards children about like self love and accepting who you are and wanting to be better, hmm. all that kind of shit. I did not know that. Yeah, the kids and I have been listening to it on the way to school. <laughs> I really don't know who I'd want to interview. I would say Meryl, Sh- Meryl Streep. Is that her name? She makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, why is that? She's just, I don't know. She's a very serious woman. And I've seen like videos of like Grammy Awards and people making, um, the fuck is the word where they prolong talking <laughs> speeches. <laughs> 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 or they're doing their speech. <laughs> Prolonged talking. I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? Oh man. Uh. And they mention Meryl Streep, and like the camera will pan to her, and it'll pan back to the person, and it'll pan back to her, and she's just deadpan the whole time. Even if they say something funny, uh, <clears throat> she just makes me uncomfortable. She doesn't show emotion very well. Yeah, yeah, she's very poker face. And I would like to sit down. So I would have to pick like. I would send out invitations to multiple people to see who would be willing to take the request. Mm-hmm. But I would say it would be a toss up between Chris Pratt, mm-hmm. Tom, <gasps> Tom Hardy. Yes. Um, because I would like to talk to him about his jujitsu training and all of that. I think mm-hmm. that's super cool. Um, or maybe Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf or whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. Only because he did that one interview where he was like, I don't give a fuck what you think. Right. I want to have that conversation. Yeah. Like, I, I, I got to be honest, those are three kind of like low-end choices because mm-hmm. the people that I would really like to talk to, I, I either wouldn't feel comfortable having conversations with them. Like, I don't think I could keep up. Um, but if I could have a sit down with Jordan Peterson that wasn't recorded so that I could be an idiot, no one would ever know that I did it, mm-hmm. and just talk to him, I would love that. Oh, yeah. I would love that. 
I don't have a whole lot of people that like I really look up to like that either. Oh, there there are a lot of people I don't look up to. Yeah. No, but I mean I, I would interview people for like comedical pers- right. See, purposes. I, I wouldn't do that. Comical purposes. I know that those talk shows are supposed to be like haha things mm-hmm. to keep you entertained, but like I hate Hollywood. Yeah. Truly. I mean, I couldn't have serious conversations every right. time we did the show. Like with this, I can't do a serious email every time we sit down or I'm going to end up hating it and never want to do it again. Right. See, and I'm the opposite. I don't mind them so much. It does wear on me after a while. Mm-hmm. But like for me, like the idea of interviewing Chris Pratt, because he's done such a, a broad thing, but he is he is turned. He's like Hollywood's number one enemy right now because right. he's conservative. He's a Christian. and He's not ashamed of any of mm-hmm. it. And every time they try to come after him, he's like, what you got? Like, right. Bring it, you know. Um, I, I'm going to go with Chris Pratt. I'm going to just go with that one. Mm-hmm. All right. So we can move on because I was, my brain was really, really going there. Yeah. Um, if a movie was made of your life, what genre would it be and who would play you? Jesus, that's a bad one. Well, mine would be Emma Stone. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> your doppelganger, according to the internet. Um, I, uh, I don't want to get into that. She would play me, but that's it. I, I don't want to. I don't know. Suspenseful thriller, and then it turns into a comedy. I, yeah. I don't know. It would depend on how my life ends to really answer that. But if it was up until the age of 20, it would be a tragedy. Yeah. And then from 20 to 40, it would not be. And as who would play me? Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? If we're going big, we might as well go big. Uh, oh man, if you absolutely had to sing karaoke, what would be your go-to song? Oh my God. Grease Lightning? Yeah. <laughs> I don't I know, I'm panicking. <laughs> I like Grease Lightning. Um, fuck, suddenly I don't know any song that ever existed. Really? Because we've played D&D and you have sat at the table and sang and sang and sang and I know. sang. I Africa. Yeah? I was pretty good at Africa. <laughs> I I, am, I love singing. I'm terrified of karaoke. Really? The idea of standing on a stage like that and trying to sing just doesn't do it. I I get that. I understand that. But if I had to, I would probably do Blues Man by Hank Williams Jr. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. One of my go-to cry songs. Oh, my God. Stop it. <laughs> What's that song by the Blues Brothers? The Blues Brothers? Yeah. Like the movie? John Belushi? Hang on. <laughs> soul man soul man by the blues brothers i am obsessed with that song <laughs> you know i i say all the time that everybody has a price yeah it doesn't matter what it is there's a price yeah i don't know you know for the right amount of money mm-hmm. somebody's willing to do anything right i don't know what my price would be to sing karaoke hmm like, I don't even know a number that I could throw out there because the idea of standing up in front of people and doing that, like the the anxiety of it gets me thinking about it. I'm so sorry. I would freeze. That's wild. Uh, and, and you know, you have this whole thing that one day we're going to do seminars and be standing up in front of crowds. I'm like, yeah. fuck, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're going to answer my you're going to answer for this for me first. OK. Before you answer it for you. If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Chicken pot pie. Oh, Damn, that was a good answer. I wasn't prepared for that. I was going to say cheeseburger and french fries, but the chicken pot pie is really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. Che- cheeseburgers and my fries. If I had to eat it for every meal every day, it's cheeseburger and fries. Yeah. Damn. You had to hit me with a chicken pot pie because now I'm second guessing myself. I love chicken pot pie. I know you do. I'm so excited for that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's the small things. What about you? What would yours be? Mine would be that meatloaf from Ford's Garage. Really? Oh, yeah. That's very specific. Mm-hmm. Specifically from there. Yeah. If you were left on a deserted island with either your worst enemy or no one, which would you choose and why? My worst enemy. Yeah? Why? Yeah. I go crazy when I'm by myself. And I mean, even if I don't like you, like we're stuck here. So let's work on our problems. Let's right. be better together. And plus, it's easier to survive when there's someone with you because I can't gather water and go hunting at the same time. Yeah. And plus, I'm not like super efficient at building fires. I'm going to also say my worst enemy and why is because I could eat them. Oh, yeah. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. If aliens landed on Earth tomorrow and offered to take you home with them, would you go? Yes. Aliens have already been here. Oh, yeah. That's true. (laughs) Um, 
You answered that quick. You're just ready to go, huh? Fuck I this place. I hate it here. <laughs> I don't know if I would go. No? I don't know. Can I get a tour? You know, I, I think I think of like Enoch from the Bible mm-hmm. and the, the time that he left and came back and he was with the angels. And then I think of ancient aliens and how they believe that he was with spaceships the entire time and he came back and everybody was way old because different time frames and shit, mm-hmm. like uh, w- wormhole theories and all that right. nonsense. And that would be kind of cool because he did come back. And when I think about it, like that aspect, sure, let's go. But then I also think of like the, the what is it, the close encounters of the fourth kind right. in, in probing and like my butthole's good where it is. Like I don't need anything crammed up there and probed and looked at and I'm, I'm okay. Mm, looks like they spit on it first. It's, <laughs> it's a, there's always time for lube. Oh, man. Uh, what would the title of your autobiography be? What a mess. <laughs> That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> it <Yeah>. was quick. <laughs> Damn it. How am I going to live up to that? <laughs> oh, Lord, here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> this again? Yeah. I don't know. Fuck it would be mine. Uh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. That was good. <laughs> And it was quick. Like you were just on it. First thing that came to my mind. You're going to sail around the world. What's the name of your boat? Crabs. Crabs. <laughs> I can't think of anything witty. I'm not good at you're nautical the, you're terms. You're like the naming person, though. You name everything. <sighs> okay. Right. But it's because like there's something there in front of me and it's it's telling me. I can read its energy and it's saying my name's Tin Allen. (laughs) (laughs) You want me to pull up a picture of a sailboat and spin it over to you? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe I'm actually doing this. And if this works, that's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, You want like a big sailboat, like a fancy one? Um, It doesn't matter. This is unexciting, guys, and I apologize. But if, you're, <laughs> if you're still here, just know that she names shit super fast most of the time. I do, yeah, but I have to have it in front of me. I need to be able to sense it. Oh, wait. There we go. I can't be reef this. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what? Oh, man. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Fuck. I was going to say the albatross because of that movie White Squall. Isn't the albatross a bird? It is. Yeah. But it's also the name of the boat in White Squall. And I don't it, know what that it, is. It's a boat that sailed out from St. Petersburg, Florida in the early 1900s, and they made a movie about it. Um, it's actually... Are you out of wine? I am, yeah. Do you want to take a break so you can grab some more? Mm. You know, maybe later okay yeah uh anyways it was a good movie i enjoyed it and it's the first time every time i think of a big boat that's what i think of because yeah. of the movie so i can't be brief this that's i don't enjoy this anymore <laughs> I, I am definitely losing <laughs> um if you could could add anyone to mount rushmore who would it be and why <laughs> anybody to mount rushmore yep do we want a serious answer or do we want a stupid answer? Answer whoever you want, babe. Jack Black. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's funny. There are people right now that are like, hell yeah. And people are like, they're like, fuck that guy. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> do, do you really think the people, well, people following us won't say that. They, yeah, I bet you they will. The random liberals. I don't care. That stumble upon us and hate everything that we say. The and, idea of just having that, like, in, like, could you imagine the heads that would explode if they were like, South Dakota was like, hey, we're going to put Trump on, on fucking Mount Rushmore now. <laughs> hey, guys, we just got the clearing to add somebody yeah. else new to the mountain. And a uh, consensus says it's Donald Trump. <laughs> they'd burn the mountain down <laughs> you know that that's gonna that that mountain those faces will probably be here long after we are oh yeah definitely yeah it's wild <laughs> i read that instantly it was like all right i want to trigger everyone yeah. yeah and that was it that's the best i got i had to make up for that I can't be reef this 
<laughs> that wasn't that good. That was it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Because dad joke boats are the shit. Right. And if you ever look like if you Google dad joke boat names, yeah. they're good. People put a lot of time into thinking like and that was 0.5 seconds was, of me. That was good. The I, boat just spoke to me. The dad joke in me really enjoyed that. Um, as a child, mm. what did you want to be when you grow up? A mom. Really? Mm-hmm. Not a comedian? I I wanted to be a comedian, but everyone in my life was like, don't quit your day job. So I was like... Okay. Well, you were a kid. You didn't have a day job. Right. It doesn't matter. It crushed my dreams. So Fuckers. I, want, I, I did want to be a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be a tattoo artist. That was something that when I turned eight years old, I was like, I want to be a tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. My mom tried to kiss my real mom tried to convince me when I was little, little that I wanted to be a neurologist because they make a lot of money. <laughs> of course she did. Yeah. Uh, what fictional world or place would you like to visit? Mm. Hogwarts. You would go Harry Potter. I would go Harry Potter. Yeah. Pandora. Yep. I would like to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite time of the day and why? I have multiple favorite times of the day. Well, it doesn't say that. It says your favorite. So you could only get one. Oh, no. It doesn't say favorites. Okay. Nighttime. Yeah. And like why? three o'clock in the morning because all I hear is nature. All of the human sounds are decreased and... If I can be somewhere where there's no light pollution, that's bonus points. Yeah. yeah. Mine's bedtime because that's when the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, guys. I'm the magic. <laughs> yes. That's funny. <laughs> what breed of dog would you be? Oh, wow. Um, have you ever seen those photos? Okay. This is going to be sound really, really. Okay. No, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I just had a whole bunch of thoughts. So I'd either be like a super pompous little like. Um, Pomeranian, like super fluffy, pristine white. Like I want to be Paris Hilton's Pomeranian. <laughs> she takes care of her animals. Like when you said Pomeranian, all I could think of was Blade, the the Blade movie with Triple H in it. When he's like, they were like, Ryan Reynolds was like, you made a fucking vampire Pomeranian. <laughs> I would be that, or I'd be like one of those derpy dog photos, yeah, with like an underbite or something and the tongue sticking out. I would be an Irish wolfhound. Wow, that is super specific. Big ass dog. Yeah. Super hairy, short lifespan. Checks all the boxes. I hate the things you say sometimes. <laughs> Why? Why do you not want to be here? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so am I because of you. How about that? It makes me feel a little bit better, but stop like daydreaming about dying. So. No, I'm not daydreaming about dying. Just, you literally just said it checks all the boxes. Short life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you had a time machine, would you go back in time or into the future? I am horrified to see the future. I know what's happened in the past. So I want to go to Victorian times. So I want to be a sad little boy named Edgar. Yeah. With yeah. the plague. I just really got on you about making death jokes, so I can't right now. <laughs> That's funny. I would go to I'd go to the future because yeah. I know that we currently have air conditioning and there's a good possibility we're gonna have it in the future too. I like electricity. Uh, I think there's a very good chance in the future that we're not gonna be here. Yeah, well, I mean it's even better so, than shit. That means I'm gonna go to a planet that's fucking full of animals and no people. I'm about that. Although they'd probably try to eat me, but you know what? I would go to the future too. I want to see how I would handle like an I am legend moment. Like New York city with animals running through it and the jungle reclaiming the city. Right. But like minus the zombies, like he was talking to mannequins. I'm okay shit. with the zombie aspect too. Just don't make me kill my dog. Yeah. That messed me up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, for this specific answer, I'd go back in time. All right. Number 32. Are you a morning person or a night person? It depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, morning person or a night person? I'm a night person. I hate waking up in the morning. You know, I was going to say that I'm more of a morning person, but the last like week and a half, I haven't wanted to get up in the morning when my alarm goes off, yeah. which is really weird because I'm normally up beforehand. Like I was up mm-hmm. this morning before your alarm went off. 
I just didn't want to fucking get out of bed. Right. And that's not me. I'm normally up, like up, up. Mm -hmm. But I also know that like if I'm up until two or three o'clock in the morning, I'm up at six o'clock regardless. Right. So I'm going to go with morning person because my body just wants to be awake. Yeah. My body wakes up too, but I hate getting out of bed because I'm like cocooned in my little blanket and comfy. Uh, What's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? The weirdest food I've ever eaten. Um, I mean, I kind of deem this as weird. It, it's in France. It's not weird, but to me, I was like, "You guys eat this?" <laughs> it, it was an anchovy pizza, but it was literally just all mashed anchovies mixed with a couple of other ingredients that made into a pie. Sound good. I did not enjoy it, um, but I ate it out of respect because the family adopted us for that night, and they made us a five course meal. And like this lady spent all day cooking dinner for us. I ate everything she made. And like, you know, I said, I appreciate you. But I, if I had to choose, I would not eat it, that anchovy pie again. That's my answer, but I can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't say that on here. That will definitely get us flagged. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have my inhaler? <laughs> it's in the cabinet. <laughs> Woo! I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, man. It's so bad. It's great for me. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow. The weirdest food I've ever eaten. Um, when I was in Hawaii, I had squid. And I, I don't want to ever eat that again. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm a pass. I feel like it's like eating a very mushy goopy sponge we'll know the people who made it this far because the comments will be like what was your answer <laughs> yeah and i'll put it in the fucking comments yeah yeah i don't give a shit i just can't say it in the video i don't want the video to get flagged uh if you could hang out with any cartoon character who would you choose and why oh wow any cartoon character that's a lot because there, there there's a huge like variety of cartoons my jesus christ Grim from the Grim Adventures of Bill, uh, Bill and Mandy. Billy and Mandy. I don't, I've never seen that. It was like a 90s cartoon. I can't believe my parents let me watch that when I was a child, but I did. <laughs> so. Wow, this is a hard one. Because my mind immediately goes 80s cartoons, and I'm like, Thundercats, mm -hmm. He-Man, uh, Grape Ape. Like, I've got all these cool cartoons from my childhood, and yeah. like, I don't think I'd want to actually hang out with any of them. Orko. From He Man. Yeah. That would probably be my answer because he was a wizard. I don't know. I don't I honestly don't know. I'm gonna change my answer. Wiley Coyote. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh I'm gonna say Randy from South Park. <laughs> I love that character. <laughs> Does that count? I guess it is a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, that would fall into that category. We should watch South Park together. I think the newer seasons, like season one through four, even the creators have said, like, if we could throw those away and they never existed, we would do it. But that's what made the show. Like that show would have never existed without those episodes. That's true. But like they've taken it a completely different direction than they had in the first four seasons. Like it's it's become like a lot of like shitting on the government and <clears throat> making fun of political views and shit. Batty from Fern Gully. <gasps> I would kill two birds with one stone. I'd I get to hang that. out with Robin Williams. <laughs> and that was not a death joke. Right. Okay. I didn't have a father figure growing up, and Robin Williams was kind of like my father figure. That explains why you wanted to be funny. What? What the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> it explains why you want to be funny. That, Robin Williams is fucking hysterical. Dude, I know, but like I, I've never made that connection in my mind, and now I want to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? Anywhere in the world. Yep. For one year. Scotland. That was pretty quick. You just yeah. want to be around those cows, huh? I do. I, I I just want to explore castles and listen to Scottish people. I love their accent. I love the way they speak. Like, I know people are like, oh my God, the British accent's the hottest thing. It's just something about a Scottish accent. Yeah. I agree. Scottish accents are better than, than British. I, I You know, I got to be honest. I'm, I think that I'm going to say Iceland because I'm so excited to go to Iceland. Like yeah. the black sand beaches and the photography experiences that I would be able to have on that small island for a mm -hmm. little bit of time. The, an island the size of fucking Kansas. It's not big. It's right. seven times smaller than Texas. Mm -hmm. 
but the photography experiences there are just incredible. And it's close right. enough to everything that if I wanted to go to other places, it would work for a good home base. But I think if I had more time to like really process that, it would change. Yeah. Because I would really want to find somewhere that's within an easy travel to other locations so that I can take a year and just do photography. Mm-hmm. That's that's a that's a, a big question. I think that's a so, for me that's a huge question. I if really you have wanted to think to, about that. If you want to do it based purely on photography, I would say Europe. Yeah. Because going from like Germany to France is a four hour drive. And then going from like I I'm trying to picture the map. I've I'm also a little buzzed right now. Yeah. Um but like France, Germany, I want to say Spain, like everything is just clustered right there. Four or five hour drives and you're in a completely different country. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to, yeah. I'd have to just figure out which countries I'd want to go to to take pictures. I've actually looked really in depth into something like that because I really hardcore thought about backpacking through Europe for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have the desire to do that, but um, if you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? Jesus Christ. Do they have to be alive? It doesn't say. Any two people. Any two famous people. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Why? That's very specific. He's he's one of my favorite presidents. Huh. He was like, he was a man. Like he was out there riding mooses and shit. And he was, why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me like that? Because I, I know like, I, I, I just, I know Theodore Roosevelt like did a lot of great things. He and did. like He did a lot of the park things and he's created a lot of like natural, national forests and things right. like that. But um, I think a lot of that shit was staged. Like in terms of his like whole fucking badassery thing that mm. he did. Uh, oh yeah, I know some of that was fibbed on. Yeah, that's that's why I was looking at you like that. Right. Like, I don't still know. one of my favorite presidents. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> why are you judging me? <laughs> I, I just wanted to know why you picked a president, and especially that one. I, it was it's yeah. not judgment. I'm curious. I, just, I, I like the things he did in term. I think he was a very intelligent dude. I like the way that he handled things. And who else? Uh, second person. So this is really morbid. The Black Dahlia. Uh, okay. Do you know who the Black Dahlia is? Are we talking about like the Elizabeth Short? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know who I would pick. Why? Why? Uh, why? Why that one? So, if I could bring back somebody from the dead and, right. and converse with them, I, I want to know like what the fuck happened to you, because there's all of these conspiracy theories, and right. they have like secret recordings of the doctor who they think could have done it. But she had like a whole life leading up to the things that happened to her. And people are speculating like she was meeting with this doctor and shit. And that doctor was performing like under the table abortions. It's just, it's all fascinating to me. Hmm. If I had time to sit down and like really think about this, my answer would change right, like yeah, right of off the bat. Well, and like I, I wouldn't have went politician at all no uh, like that would have never even crossed my mind mm-hmm. but then you did that and then i was like well you know if i had to sit down with a politician i'd want to sit down with grant would be yeah. nice or ron paul would be super nice mm-hmm. because i'm a huge ron paul fan um but i gotta be honest i don't think i would want to sit down with a politician at all because they're all liars like yeah. they just um even now my answers are changing yeah yeah this is not an easy question because yeah. you, you just want to you know throw something out there to answer the question but mm-hmm. Um, it's fun to just throw the first two things that come to mind. And the yeah. first two things that came to mind were Edward Norton and um, Brad Pitt, because we could talk about Fight Club. Right. Which, oh. would, you know, break the rules of Fight Club and probably get me beat up. But I love that. It, it, that you know, because it's my favorite movie. So, right. like, I, I, that would be fun for me to, to have a conversation with them about the making of the movie and have, like, just the both of them talking about the experiences and shit. Right. Um, don't know what that was. Could have been the ice maker. No. My wine wasn't chilled enough for me. Um, that would have been my first answer, but that's not... I mean, if I really had time to think about it, that's not who I'd want to sit down with. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I would want to sit down with... I would... Okay. Rob Bailey. Mm-hmm. Definite answer. I would like to sit down with Rob Bailey. Uh, and I guess because we're on that topic, Andy and Priscilla, like mm-hmm. they're not like super, super famous people, but those two people having a dinner conversation, I think would level my life up big time mm-hmm. because we mm-hmm. all have similar thought processes and I would, I would learn things in that dinner that I would never be able to, to get otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. 
I guess I'm simple in that aspect because I didn't pick anybody super, super famous. There's, right. There's people out there that probably don't even know who those guys are. So I'm going <laughs> to, one person that I would like to add to that list is Jeffrey Dahmer. Whoa. Yeah. Really? I am super. You're fa- just going for it. <laughs> no, like, I, I'm super fascinated by psychology. Yeah. And he experienced a childhood that that's pretty common, like abusive parents, an absent parent, um, a lot of yelling and screaming in the household, being neglected as a child. Yeah. That's everybody that grew up in the seventies, eighties. and 90s. Right. So what, what happened in his mind that drew him towards the things that he did? I, I want to understand the psychology behind that. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, uh, I remember when all that went down. Like I remember when he got right. arrested. Wasn't that and, like 83 or something? Uh, no, it was way later than Wait, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to answer this one for you. Oh, and I could be wrong, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, let's find out. If you could be any animal in the world, what would that animal be? Animal, what animal would you choose to be? And that's going to be one of those little hairy cows, so that you can lay down in a yellow flower, a mostly yellow flower field. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It would be that. And if I couldn't be a cow, if God was like, "No, we have enough of those," <laughs> <laughs> I would want to be like an 18 foot fat gator. Yeah, yeah, like the one that we saw that mob boss gator. <laughs> That's funny. That'd be me. What would mine be? You'd want to be like some fucking massive pit bull or something. Mm-hmm. No? Nope. What would you be? I would want to be um, a minx cat. A minx, minx cat? Is it minx or lynx? I think it's a minx. The lynx? The minx? one with the ears? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lynx. Yeah. Either that or a grizzly bear. Yeah. Because then I could probably hug another grizzly and not get killed. Because I, I want to hug True. a grizzly bear before <laughs> I die. The audacity of those bears to have cute little ears the way they do. And giant murder mittens. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> I, you know, there's um, there's a, a wolf rescue in right outside of Yellowstone in Montana. My ass hurts. Oh. Um, and at that wolf rescue, they have grizzly bears. And it's the closest I've ever been to a grizzly bear and not been at a threat. It was like 10 feet from me. And they hide all this food around and like the bears come out and move shit around to find it to get the food. And it's like a little hunting game for them so that they can perform for us because mm-hmm. that's, you know, what we do is, as humans, we make everything fucking perform for us. And um, I just want to hug one of those things so fucking bad. Yeah. Did you ever watch um, Hell on Wheels? No. Um, if the guy that the main character of that show, Colin Bohannon, was a real person, not mm-hmm. like an actor, but like that was a real thing, I would want to sit down and talk to him. So he would be a dinner guy too. But um, there's a scene in that where Common gets mauled by a grizzly bear and mm-hmm. like kills it, but he's all fucked up afterwards. And every time I think about wanting to hug a bear, I think about that scene. And then I think about the the Leonardo DiCaprio guy mm-hmm. and the, the mauling that he got in his movie too. Yeah. And I'm like, man, you guys just fucking ruined this for me. <laughs> Um, if you could rename yourself, what name would you pick? Blair. That was pretty quick. Yeah, I've thought about this. Oh, okay. I don't have one. I No? No, because I have a normal name. Like And it's kind of a basic dick name. Yeah. But it was, you know, Saint Christopher. Right. So like I could I don't know. I like the name Gabriel. I always thought that was a cool name, but then people would call me Gabe. And I don't like that. Yeah. I would have to correct them. My name is fucking Gabriel. Like, stop it. Right. Check those people. Yeah. Gabriel is what I go with. Yeah. Yep. That's not something I've really ever thought of. No? Mm -mm. I think about a lot of things. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? The most adventurous thing I've ever done? Jesus Christ. You go first. The thing I sent you on your phone. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad I got to be a part of it. I mean, when you say adventurous, it's supposed to be fun, exciting things. <laughs> the stupid count. <laughs> right. Not things that are just dumb that could put you right. in harm's way. So like I've gone whitewater rafting and I've done zip lining and things like that. But like <coughs> I've gone parasailing. That sounds fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, I would say the most adventurous. I, I'm a pretty thing boring guy, I guess, because yeah. that's neither one of those things are super exciting. Whitewater rafting was fun. Yeah, but I got super sunburnt. I almost got knocked out of the raft too. That was yeah, kind of scary. But they tell you that when you get under, when you get knocked out of the raft, the chances are it's going to go over you. Mm-hmm. So you have to hold your breath and not panic. You know how hard that is when you think you're going to drown to not fucking panic. Yeah, yeah. Number forty. Final question. Oh. We're an hour and fifteen minutes in. Crazy. I'm glad that this is over. <laughs> what is the strangest thing you used to believe as a kid? <clears throat> Eating crust off the bread would make my hair curly. That my parents loved me. I had an answer for that one ready to go. 
<laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> because we've been having fun, and the last question is going to be so dope. And uh, you want me to change my answer? No, that that was your answer. It just made me sad. Wait a minute. You said say yours again. <laughs> that eating the crust off the bread would what? That eating like the crust off the bread or the crust of a pizza would make my hair curly. Where did you get that from? My mom would tell me that so I wouldn't waste food. Your hair is curly though. Right. But my mom has like super curly kinky hair. She has like, I think her hair is like, I think it's like 4C. Like it's coarse and Wait, curly. Okay. Wait. So. Wait. What? What is 4C? Okay. So there's different types of hair. There's super straight hair. And then so like on the scale of hair textures and curly versus whatever, there's straight like pin straight on one end and then there's like super coarse curly like you pull that shit and it bounces and there's different categories and they have names for all of that yes they do i have to google this so my mom has that kind of hair and i wanted hair like her and she's like well if you eat the crust off of bread or if you eat your pizza crust your hair is gonna get curly like mine i mean i still have curly hair but it's not to the like the point of hers I, how have I lived 42 years and never known that there was a hair chart that tells you the type of hair types you have? I mean, you don't have hair, so. I, well, yeah. I'm kidding. I, I'm not 4C, but my hair is like up there with the. Well, according to this, 4C is like Afro. Right. That's what my mom has. She keeps her hair super short, so it's easier for her to straighten and maintain. Mm-hmm. Her hair would form dreads. I, I Googled like, 4C and it's just big Afros. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I honestly don't know. That's kind of slick, though, that she would tell you that to get you to eat all your food. Yeah, it worked for a very long time. I was like 14 or 15. I'm like, I'm not seeing any changes. Um, This is bullshit. Where's the facts behind this? Own it up, mom. Yeah, Yeah. I I need you to like cite your sources. You know that Mm -hmm. kids will never fall for shit like that ever again because they have access to technology. Yeah, you can just Google it. Will crust make my hair curly? Mom, you're a liar. And if they don't have it, they can go to school the next day and use it at school or make one of their friends who has a cell phone or a tablet do it. Yeah. I'm really trying to find a non-shitty answer for 40 and I don't. You don't have I one. don't have one. I'm going to just stick with my original answer because it's been five minutes and I have nothing else going in my brain. Yeah. I'm stuck on the fact that I'm 42 years old and just found out there's a fucking hair chart for hair curliness type. Yeah. <clears throat> there's also a different way like you treat your hair versus straight and curly. You're not supposed to shampoo your hair every day. Yeah. Well, I, I knew that. Yeah. I had, I actually had like before my hair started, like before yeah. I started losing the top of it, mm-hmm. I had Shirley Temple curls. Right. I had, you know, curly, curly hair. Wild. All right, guys, that was 40 questions with the Chris's and you learned a whole lot of nonsense. And if you watched all the full <laughs> hour and 20 minutes of this, just tell us in the description so we know how dedicated you are. That would be dope. Yeah. Yeah. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.